Today we're gonna learn how to use apply image to create awesome effects in Photoshop. Whether you wanna make the skies more dramatic, make your images pop, or even create a double exposure. You can do that using apply image. And we have a bunch of examples to illustrate the point. It's gonna be fun, that's guaranteed. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and again if you want to follow along using the photos shown in the video, make sure to go ahead and download that using the links in the description, okay? So the first thing that we need to do, really really simple, go to image and then apply image. A dialog box will pop up. It's not intimidating at all, it's really simple guys. So the source is the document that you choose as a source to apply the effect. You'll understand this. So for example, we are in this document, Pexels 401, so we're going to use this source. You can also use other sources which we'll get to later in the tutorial. So now the layer that you choose, you can also use other layers but since this document just has one, so we're going to choose the background layer and channel. Here's where things get interesting. Normally if you apply layers and change the blend modes, you cannot get the individual channels of that. But using apply image, you can use individual channels. You can choose any channel that you like for now, choose any channel that you like and choose a blending mode. For example, if you want to darken, if you want to bring more out of the sky, you can choose say multiply. You can also choose maybe darken, see how that looks. You can also choose a, a lot of blend modes are there. You want to increase the contrast, you choose overlay. Then there is soft light. Look how beautiful effect this gives on the trees. Now I'm going to choose say multiply. This brings amazing details on the sky. Now you can choose different channels to see which channel brings the most details in the sky. So. Let's go ahead and try blue, nope, green, kinda red, red was the best. Look at the amount of details in the sky. But if you wanna look at the before and after, go ahead and check this out. Before, this is the after. This looks great, yeah, it looks awesome, but this adds a lot of darkness here which we didn't want. Now, here you can add a mask which is also amazing. So we chose the red channel. Now. We can delete any channel we want from this one. For example, let's try deleting green. We applied the red channel, we can delete the green channel from this. We don't want the effect to be affected in the green areas of the photo, in the green channels of the photo. So blue, that's much more better. Red uh, won't be much of an effect, won't make much of a difference. Make sure you choose either gray, green and blue. Choose anything which you have not chosen here, okay? So I'm gonna go with say, Blue, this looks really nice. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Look at the details in the sky. Now click OK once you're satisfied. And one of the biggest drawbacks of apply image is that it burns down the effect to the pixels. It just modifies the pixels, it burns down the effect and you just cannot do much about it. You cannot use the opacity slider, you cannot use masking and stuff. So here's a workaround. So instead of applying it this way, let's go back Control Alt Z, Command Option Z if you're using a Mac, then Control Alt Z. Right. Now, what we do is create a copy of the background layer, Control and J. Command J if you're using a Mac. Now apply, apply image, then image, apply image. There we go. It's set to whatever we had set before, just click OK and there we go. Have a look before, after and if you don't want the effect in a particular area of the photo, you can simply go ahead, create a mask, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background color and then paint out the areas that you don't want the effects in. So for example, you didn't want the effect here, so simply paint out this area. You didn't want the effect maybe in the water, simply paint out the area and you have the idea of how to do that. Now let's move on to the next example. Similarly in this photo, if you want to bring the best out of your photo, here's what you need to do. Make a copy of the background layer, control command J. But before we proceed, let me show you something. If we move to channels, have a look at every channel, okay? Just have a look. Look at the red channel, look at how much more details we have in the sky. Green channel, not much of a detail. Blue channel, not much of a detail. We have some, but the red channel has the most details. So this gives you a clue that the red channel is the key. We're gonna use the red channel when we apply image inside quotations, okay? Okay, go to image, apply image. And it's for sure that we're gonna use the red channel, so let's go ahead and try and select the red channel. 
Now, as you can see, much details have been applied in the sky. Now you can go ahead and try different blend modes. Of course, we wanted to darken it. So multiply will be our man. And let's try darken too. No, doesn't look right. Light and screen. screen. Let's try overlay, soft light. Nope, nope. I think multiply will be the one which we'll be using. Now, simply also let's add a mask. Maybe this time let's try the blue mask. Yes, have a look. Before, after, look at the sky. It looks really interesting. Click OK. Done. Before, after. Now, if you didn't want this to affect the pyre or whatever this is called, you just create a mask, click on this button, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black and just simply paint here. This kind of brightens this up just a little bit. There we go. And done. Have a look. Before, after, before, after. Very interesting. In the next example, suppose you wanted to make the image pop. You wanted to add a little contrast without losing details in the highlights and shadows. How to do that? Because when you add contrast, see the basic definition of contrast is making the brighter areas more brighter, darker areas more darker. Yes, that's it. And when you do that, you lose details in the highlights and shadows. But how do I increase contrast without losing details? Here's how. Apply image is the key. Make a copy of the background layer. And this time, go to Image, Apply Image. Now, to increase the contrast, this group of blend modes are the ones that you want to use, right? Overlay, soft light, hard light. So Photoshop has kind of grouped blend modes. These blend modes darken stuff. These blend modes, this group actually brighten stuff. And these blend modes increase the contrast. So we're going to use maybe, say, try soft light. Looks interesting. What about overlay? Also looks interesting. What about hard light? Well, that's kind of looks same. Maybe soft light, maybe overlay. Okay, overlay looks really fantastic, but we lose details in the sky. Simple. Again, mask is our best friend now. Add a mask. Have a look. This doesn't look kind of interesting. Let's try other channel. Let's try red. Doesn't look interesting. Green. Doesn't look interesting. Blue. Kind of better. Have a look. Before, after. This looks better. Let's try other blend modes now. Hard light doesn't make much of a difference. Yes, yeah, soft light looks nice. What about vivid light? Wow, vivid light looks really nice. But look at the sky. We are losing the details. Let's try different blend modes. Maybe the red. Maybe the green. Maybe the blue. This kind of looks interesting. But here's what we're going to do. We love the contrast here. We love this area. But the sky area, it's really getting me. So click OK. And that's when masks kick in. OK, so add a mask as simple as that. Take the brush and paint out this area just like this. And there we go. Now this looks really nice. Have a look before, after. You can also decrease the density of the mask, which means that now that I have painted here, the effect completely goes away from here. In other words, the layer completely disappears from this area. If I go ahead and turn this off, the layer completely disappears from this area. But we want to partially erase it. How to do that? Double click on this. This opens up the properties of the mask. If it doesn't open up the properties, just single click on this and go to Windows and then click properties. Now we can decrease the density to make it partially visible, just like that. Let's make the background layer on. Let's turn it on and have a look. Let's just increase it just to the point where, where you see the details. And there you go. Have a look. Before, after really makes the images pop, really brings the best out of your photo. Which brings us to our next example. What if you want to combine two documents, two images, maybe even create a double exposure? Here's how to do it. So here we have a picture of a cute girl blowing out bubbles. Now, what if you want to add pattern to it? Just like this. What if you want to add patterns like this to this one? Here's how to do it. First, don't forget to do that. Make a copy of the background layer. Why? Because once you apply apply image, it kind of burns down to the pixels and there's no going back. Create a copy of the background layer. Then go to image, then apply image. Now here's the key. In the source, instead of the same image, we got to choose the other one. But there's a problem here. If we go ahead and just click the drop down arrow, we don't see the other image. Why don't we see the other image? Let's solve this. Okay. I did it on purpose, by the way. Okay, let's cancel that. Let's solve it. We don't see the other image. Let's solve it. 
Here's the thing, one of the other biggest drawbacks of apply image is that the dimensions of the source should be same as the target. So the dimensions of this document is 4498 into 2994, right? If you cannot see this, you click on this arrow and choose document dimensions. But for this one, it is 1920 and 1200. It's not the same. So both has to match in order for apply image to work. Okay, so what do we need to do? Go to image, image size, and what was that size? 4498 to 994, okay? Image, image size. Make sure this is checked off, then 4498 to 994, to 994. I hope I remember it well. Click OK. Now it's that size. Let's see. It's applying the size and we'll see whether that matches or not this time. I hope that works. Let's zoom out just a little bit. 4498-2994, fine. 4498-2994. Now it should work. Image, apply image. There we go. And now if you choose the source, you see the second image there. Isn't that interesting? Okay, let's choose the second one. And then as you can see, straight out of the box, really amazing. Now, vivid light looks fine. You can also go ahead and decrease the opacity. Just like that. It looks really good. What about trying other channels? Maybe red channel. Nope. Green channel. Green channel looks really nice. Blue channel. That's kind of too much. Maybe I'll go with green channel. This looks really nice. And maybe we'll increase or decrease the opacity. Try overlay maybe. Mm, soft light, hard light. Hard light looks good. Vivid light also looks good. So kind of I was satisfied with vivid light. Let's go ahead and decrease the... Just like that. And you basically have the idea of how this works. You can even add a mask if you want to and try different channels in the mask settings. And once you're satisfied, click OK. And there you have it. And suppose you don't want the darkness here, you can simply add a mask and take the brush and simply paint with black here. Just like that. Simple. And you can just paint in different areas and make it look more nicer, right? Just like that. Maybe you accidentally painted on an area, Press X, make sure the foreground color is white again, and then you can again paint that back in if you want that. And press X, it becomes black, erase. Black to erase, white to add. Now here's one more thing. This time, we got away by changing the image size, which eventually changed the aspect ratio, which we didn't want. Sometimes, what's gonna happen is that your images are gonna be wide, some is gonna be vertical. So when you change the image size, it's it won't look good because it will be stretched. Here's a workaround. So instead of having two documents, here's what we can do. So let's go back in this one. Let's bring it back to its original size. Now, press controller command A, controller command C, and then let's just paste it here. Let's delete this layer and let's just paste it in a new layer, just like that. Or what you can also do, let's delete it. You can just simply drag the background layer and paste it just right above it. This automatically creates a new layer and you just can resize it the way you want. So suppose you didn't want to stretch it, didn't want to change the image size, you can simply go ahead and stretch it in proportions by holding the shift key and then stretching it. By the way, I did press controller command T to open up the transformation tool and then hold the shift key, make it bigger just like that and you can adjust it the way you want and once you're satisfied, hit enter. Now, make a copy of the background layer, Control command J, and you can bring this layer beneath this one, or you can even turn this off. So, come back to this one, go to image, then apply image. And this time, as a source, you can have the same document, Pexels Photo 1, and layer, here we can change this. Layer, choose layer 1, we're gonna use this as a source this time. So, layer 1, same result, Vivid Light 51, looks awesome, click OK. And that's another way to do it. So that's pretty much it about apply image in Photoshop. Hope this video helped you. All it does is that it applies either the same image or different image with a blend mode and it also allows you to choose the separate channels of the image. So I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe. And not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.